talking about decorative silver, we usually think of objects such as English tea sets made in sterling silver, which in fact is an alloy made of minimum 92.5% silver and the remaining is usually copper. However, in the past years, Chinese export silver became highly sought after in auctions and antique shops. With the European Chinese trade in the 18th to early 20th century, European tourists would spend months at a time in China with enough time on their hands to have local silversmiths produce European shaped silverwork with motifs such as dragons, flowers and landscapes. The silver composition was not as regulated as it was in Europe. Therefore, the composition could vary greatly. Slight differences in the composition of a metal alloy causes the hardness, ductility and color of the silver to differ. When collecting silver, one has to understand this precious metal and its nature. Pure silver is very soft, almost as soft as plaster. It scratches, dents and bends easily. Copper and other elements were and are added to increase the strength of silver for daily use. Silver is extremely reactive. When it comes into contact with our urban, highly polluted air, it will tarnish rapidly when not specially protected. In urban or coastal areas, the silver surface quickly turns black. This is mainly caused by the presence of sulfur and chlorides in the atmosphere. These chemicals are byproducts of combustion engines, heavy industry and marine aerosols. Handling of silver will also result in blackening. Most hands, no matter how clean, will be slightly sweaty and this sweat reacts with the clean silver and induces corrosion. Cleaning blackened and tarnished silver is not as simple as it may seem. On a microscopic level, commercial silver pastes can actually do more damage than good, since their compositions vary greatly. They usually scratch and change the silver surface composition. The most common brands contain ammonia. This chemical will dissolve the copper in the silver alloy and make the surface porous. After polishing, the surface will contain mainly silver. This silver surface is even more reactive than the silver copper alloy of the main body and due to the higher purity of the silver surface, the silver will retarnish even more rapidly than before. Another classic method is the use of aluminum foil, water and baking soda. It is a quick fix household remedy, easy to use and removes tarnish in the deepest corners and recesses. However, the dramatic effect will cause irreversible damage. The electrolytic reduction process will reduce all silver tarnish and can result in a porous and brittle surface. This surface is easily scratched, damaged and readily tarnishes again. I came across a 2500 year old Greek antique silver dish treated by this method, which broke into small pieces during a flight due to the changes in cabin air pressure. In Southeast Asia, a traditional and still common method to clean silver is the use of lime or young coconut juice. These juices are highly acidic and will corrode away the tarnish and some of the silver. The resulting surface is usually very dull, pitted and unsightly. Silver treated with lemon juice usually looks like rough steel and needs to be polished after pickling 
resulting in even further loss of silver. In a museum context, antique silver is rarely polished nowadays, since each polish will remove the tarnish and with it some of the original silver surface. The removal of the silver will result in a blurring and in the long run in the loss of decoration. If the tarnish disfigures the surface to an extent that the decoration is obscured, the polishing is done by a professional conservator. The materials used are of high grade, such as a very fine powdered calcium carbonate and a lubricant. The treatment is performed under a binocular microscope to ensure that only minimal silver is removed and no scratching occurs. Only the parts of the silver that need polishing are treated. The action of the treatment is highly controlled and the process can be stopped at any time. Usually the engraved or lower areas are not polished in order to highlight the decorative aspects of the design. The highly reactive polished silver is then covered in a reversible synthetic lacquer to prevent further future tarnishing and the need for further polishing. For collections, it is recommended to only display silver in areas with furnishings such as carpets and woods that do not release harmful gases such as acids. Most plywood and other industrial woods are known to release these harmful gases and are almost completely avoided. The best materials to be used in showcases are glass, metal, stone and acrylic. When storing silver, we recommend bags that prevent the tarnishing of silver. These bags will protect from damaging gases. They are either made of textile or of polyethylene and have absorbent substances incorporated into these materials. It is hence important to reiterate that it is not recommended to polish silver frequently since it will not only carry off silver but also flatten or remove fine engravings or repousse work. Commercially available silver cleaners are to be avoided as they tend to scratch and deplete antique silver. This causes any future analytical surface testing for authenticity purposes to be inaccurate and can devaluate the antique. When handling your silver always wear clean, fine cotton gloves or non-powdered nylon plastic gloves and take all your jewelry off.